Essential to any computer vision system, of course, are images and videos. And so it's really, really important that we understand where that input comes from, and in particular, the image formation process, and that's where we're going to start. So we, of course, routinely look at photographs, and often we're just sort of comprehending what's in the photograph, and maybe we don't recognize or notice lots of really fascinating and amazing things that happen, uh, even in the simplest of photographs. So, of course, this is a photograph of me, and there's a lot of really interesting things that have happened in the process of this image being recorded. So, for example, the camera must know how to control the exposure. There's a bunch of light out in the world, and the camera has mechanisms for controlling how much light goes in. We'll talk about that later on uh, in, the, in a few lectures from now. Um, but it has to be able to make sure that it's not too bright, not too dark, and it has to know where to expose on. So when you're pointing, for example, at my face, I want to be able to see me, and I don't care so much about, for example, if the sky is blown out. So how is the camera controlling for the amount of light and for the proper exposure? Um, you may have noticed uh, that on the tile floor here, um, each of those squares, I think probably we can agree, out in that three-dimensional world where I was physically standing, are square. Um, but notice here that as you recede away from the camera, those squares seem to be getting smaller. So I've drawn two dashed yellow lines going along two of the, the lines uh, between the, the squares, and you notice that they seem to be getting smaller. But I think we don't, we're not confused. It doesn't look like the world is shrinking as it goes away. So what's happening here, that's so-called perspective projection, and this so incredibly important concept in the creation of images, and we're going to model that and understand why is it that things recede or get smaller as they move away from the camera. You may have noticed that in the background over here, it's a little blurry at, relative to this. So the camera, in addition to controlling the exposure, also had to figure out where the focus point is. And so it focused on me, but why is it blurry in the background? What, what is happening there? What is the mechanism? And you can, you can imagine why in a computer vision system that would be incredibly important, because if something is blurry in an image, that aesthetically may be interesting, but from the perspective of a computer vision system that has to reason about the world, that may be less desirable, and we should at least understand where that change of focus is coming from and why it's happening. Now, those are things that you can just see by looking at the photo um, as it is at this regular resolution. But if you start zooming in, you see a whole other level of artifacts that are really fascinating. So here, for example, what you notice where I've magnified that box is that there's a color fringing. There's a green um, line going up and down and a magenta one along the side there. And that is so-called chromatic or color aberrations. It's not the fault of the camera. It's not the fault of the sensor or anything else. This has to do with the physics of the world, so-called Snell's Law. And the reason why we care about this is that these types of artifacts, while you might want to minimize them for perceptual reasons, the photo is not as nice, have big impact on computer vision systems because they are things that we can't necessarily avoid and we should at least understand where they come from and to the extent that we can correct them, we should. Um, also, if you zoom in, for example, on my tie right here, you'll notice that it's a little grainy. It's not, when you see it at regular resolution here, you don't notice that it's a little spotty. My shirt looks like it's changing color. That is noise, sensor noise. Uh, again, some of that has to do with the physics of light. Some of that has to do with the quality of the sensor. Some of it has to do with the amount of light in the world. And some of it has to do with camera settings. And we need to understand that, that imperfection as well, because that could interfere with our ability to reason about an image. And lastly, if you zoom in just at the top of my head right there, you notice a whole nother set a level of artifacts. In particular, these are now JPEG compression artifacts. So this, of course, has nothing to do with the world that's being imaged. It actually has very little to do with the camera. It has to do with how the camera is reading out images, which these days is almost always JPEG, lossy compression images that lead to imperfections. And again, that imperfection, whether it's JPEG compression, whether it's noise, whether it's chromatic aberrations, we need to understand because they may interfere with our ability to reason about images and extract information. So that's just a quick overview of the image formation process that we will be studying throughout this semester.